The Sahara is one of the greatest deserts in the world. Long considered as the other face of the Mediterranean, it has played a fundamental role in shaping the culture of the region since prehistoric times. Just a few thousand years ago, the Sahara was lush savanna, and water was still abundant. The art depicted on its rocks by successive civilizations tells a remarkable story of changing climate and human adaptation. La rupes du Tassili, du Sahara Central, si cette petite fenêtre restait entrouverte, à travers laquelle on pourrait encore regarder ces périodes anciennes. Et le passage donc d'une période à l'autre s'est fait juste pour faciliter l'étude et l'accessibilité à cette rupes. Mais il y a une continuité et qui suit la, 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 les changements climatiques. À chaque fois que on vit dans un environnement, un climat, tout change. Donc l'environnement, donc les animaux, la, la, la faune et la flore, et aussi la, la culture qui s'adapte. As the Sahara is transformed into one of the most arid and extreme environments on our planet, Artists illustrate the changes in human livelihoods, from hunting to cultivation, to the herding of cattle and later of camels. The creation of the Sahara was induced over thousands of years by natural phenomena associated with shifts in the Earth's orbit. Now, massive changes to the planet's climate are rapidly being driven by mankind. These could produce catastrophic effects that we may experience during both our own lifetimes and those of our children. Climate change is a change of our climate system due to an, an anthropogenic and the natural uh, causes. But in the last uh, hundreds of years, the science is giving us more evidence that the anthropogenic uh, cause of climate change are overwhelming the natural causes. Which are the anthropogenic causes? Are emission of greenhouse gases like carbon dioxide, methane, or uh, nitro oxide, which are affecting the natural greenhouse effect. So they are reinforcing the, this greenhouse effect and producing global warming. And also on the other side, we have deforestation. So if we deforest, uh, we lose carbon sinks, and so we increase the net concentration of the CO2 in our atmosphere. Nous savions déjà que la spécificité géomorphologique du bassin méditerranéen était une cause de sa vulnérabilité. Nous savions aussi que le développement humain et la littoralisation du développement qu'a connu la région méditerranéenne depuis les années 50 a aggravé cette vulnérabilité. Mais aujourd'hui, on assiste à un phénomène qui aggrave encore davantage cette vulnérabilité. Les changements climatiques, avec l'ensemble de ses implications, aggravent davantage cette vulnérabilité de la région méditerranéenne et de l'Afrique du Nord. Clair que dans les accords de Paris, nous avons voulu que ces 
populations vulnérables soient protégées. Vous savez qu'à travers le monde, il y a 700 millions de personnes qui n'ont pas accès à l'eau potable. 300 millions de ces personnes se trouvent en Afrique. Il y a aujourd'hui un milliard de personnes qui n'ont pas accès à l'énergie, qui utilisent la tourbe ou le bois de feu pour se chauffer et qui tous les jours menacent non seulement les changements climatiques, mais leur santé. Et aujourd'hui, il va falloir qu'on trouve une solution à ces pays. Today, the main cause of climate change is recognized to be the accumulation of carbon dioxide and other greenhouse gases in the atmosphere as a direct result of human activities. To stabilize global warming under 2 degrees, the world needs to cut emissions to zero before the end of this century. In December 2015, at the Paris Climate Summit, negotiators reached a historic international agreement to begin slowing the impact of climate change. What does it mean, the two degree target, which has been adopted from the European Union already in 1996, if I'm not wrong, is about to keep the global surface air temperature up to a limit of two degrees respect to the pre-industrial level. So respect to the temperature level before the industrial revolution. So if we keep the temperature increase, most likely the impacts of climate change in the different sector will be address through adaptation and will not be too costly and we will not reach tipping points, irreversible state of change of our climate system. The Paris Agreement is a historic agreement. For the first time, we have a universal uh, and binding climate uh, change agreement which give us the tools uh, to be able to stop global warming uh, in dangerous levels for the world. So it's a historic uh, uh, situation, and now we have to implement what we have agreed in Paris. COP21, and maybe a quantum leap, since it's not only the duty of the states and the governments to execute all the commitments they have pledged for in Paris, but also we have the citizens of the world, we have the civil society, and I believe this is a better commitment. I'd like to ask you to join us in making a commitment and being under the, the scrutiny of our children in 10 years from today. So, with your help, here come the trees. Climate change may jeopardize the economic development so far achieved in the Mediterranean region. Income and employment may be lost, and the economies of many countries severely damaged. Income gaps between the rich and the poor may widen, with many poor countries driven towards greater poverty. ما كاين حوت ما كاين والو غير سمارة امشي واجي امشي واجي شي حاجه ما كاين السما ما بقاتش كتصب الحوت ما بقاش كيهون صاب الحوت كيمشي بحالو على برا كيخرج بحالو صاب ديك الساعه المحاوله قليله ماشي وصافي عالقه قط وصافي At the mythical Pillars of Hercules, the headlands of the southern and northern rims of the Mediterranean coast are so close they almost touch. A poignant reminder of the proximity of the Mediterranean people throughout history. Now countries in the region are bound together in confronting the common threat of climate change and global warming. Already the impacts of global warming, we are experimenting them in the South Mediterranean very clearly. So having a global commitment to stop the increase in temperatures and putting in action all the support for developing countries to 
uh, implement adaptation and mitigation strategies is a very good news and for the first time we have done this collective exercise and this collective commitment to fight global warming. Global warming is already manifest in receding glaciers and snow lines. For the Mediterranean region, current projections announce a potential drop of almost one-third in annual rainfall. Droughts are likely to become more frequent, more intense and longer lasting. For pastoralists, changing climate conditions may disrupt their seasonal movement in search of new pastures for their flocks and herds. The ski season began around the 15th of December, before Christmas, and it used to snow until the end of March. Whereas now, last year for example, uh, that is considered a good year, the snow season began on the 6th of January and lasted until the 15th, 20th of March. So you have like a month of difference in the ski season. Climate change in Lebanon start to be uh, significantly uh, seen and, and understood mostly from snow cover that uh, usually covers all these mountains in Lebanon because snow is the source of our water resources whether in aquifers or in rivers and then we use all this water for our needs in agriculture and for humans and for animals uh, in our daily lives. في سنين ما بتروح على الطرقه ما حدا بيعوزها، في سنين العالم تقتل بعضها لتشرب، ما هلا كل فليح وكل انسان بيعرف مصلحته. سنه مثلا في جفاف مي، اللي كان عم يزرع 300 دولو صار بيعملوا 200. بيلاقي كمان في اكثر الجفاف بيعملوا 100. وبيلحقوا هالطريقه هاي وهالعالم مثل ما بيقول المثل تعقل تعقل وتوكل. Think and then act. This is the key to secure a sustainable food supply and to adapt to climate change. Rising temperatures in the region are expected to cause a decrease in land areas suitable for agriculture, shorten the length of growing seasons and reduce crop yields. Here in the suburbs of Beirut, farmers are resorting to cultivating within greenhouses as the city expands all around them. It was the suburb of Beirut and the cro uh, traditional crops were grown here in this area. During the last decades, a decrease in the rainfall while an increased water demand, either from urbanization or from agriculture, especially that in this area, farmers have switched to greenhouses. We used to use a lot of water to make the water in the water. We used to use water to make the water in the water. We used to use water to make the water in the water. ملحت ملحت المي لانه عم نستعمل مي كثير ملحت المي واثرت علينا كثير rain water is collected from the greenhouse rooftop by the gutters which moves first in the first flash which consists of 0.5 mm of the rainfall then the remaining water that is collected from the greenhouse moves to the buffer tank and then to the storage tanks Climate change may lead to the widespread displacement of populations. Periods of severe drought and crop failure may contribute to the exodus of farmers from the countryside to the cities. 
a factor potentially heightening social unrest, the possibility of conflict and ultimately of migration. This is Syria. This is a formal Syrian house or a formal Syrian refugee house. Um, Syrians here in Wadi Khaled uh, don't live uh, in, uh, in informal settlements and camps or something like that. Uh, residents here prefer to, to let them uh, live in, uh, in, uh, in their apartments, in, the, in their building or even in unfinished buildings. There has been some, um, some talks about um, refugees being impacted or caused by climate change in Syria and then uh, being one of the causes of, uh, of, 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 of a movement of people within Syria but also uh, eventually from Syria to Lebanon. One of the things that we've been doing here is to make sure to support the host communities that are actually uh, well hosting Syrian refugees in Lebanon from a pure climate related uh, resources. For an example is for example um, the water resources uh, in the north. This is the distribution network. This reservoir is very small to, to cover the whole village. The pump station here covers around 20 villages. For us, we are working on, on one pump inside the pump room, which has around seven pumps. Uh, and other donors are focusing on other pumps to, uh, to rehabilitate other, uh, uh, or to help other villages to, uh, to overcome this problem. Je m'appelle François Médal, je suis un aventurier, je parcours le monde grâce au soleil, grâce à mon vélo. Le soleil c'est quelque chose qui m'apporte le voyage, la liberté. Grâce à son énergie, je peux voyager, découvrir la terre, découvrir d'autres peuples. Voilà, c'est le soleil, c'est la vie. If you see what happened in the road to Paris with the 187 countries putting their uh, intended national determined contribution, in a very important part of them, there were two components, energy efficiency and renewables energy. And the International Energy Agency has estimated that to implement this INDCs, we will need investments of $3.5 trillion in the future. So that means two things that with the agreement in Paris we are going to a decarbonized economy and we are going to produce energy not with fossil fuels but with renewables. Many countries are already advancing in the deployment of energy systems based on renewables. Morocco is aiming to generate more than 40% of its energy from renewable sources by 2020 and is currently building the world's largest solar power plant. This project will slash hundreds of thousands of tons of greenhouse gas emissions every year. Well, I think there's two tracks. One is that the existing set of technologies which are there are, are going to need to improve. So if we look at the way that costs have reduced in solar over the last five years, anywhere between 60 to 80% cost reduction from where they were five years ago. A lot of that has to do with basic R&D around how to improve the efficiency of the cells, but a lot has to do with improvements in what we call soft costs. That's how much does it take to set up the project, to do the installation, to do the operations and maintenance. Algeria is developing low emission transportation through the conversion of vehicles to natural gas, the promotion of public transport, and the renovation of its roads and highways. An important research program aims at developing energy solutions which are tailored to the varying climatic conditions prevailing in the Mediterranean region. L'Algérie, comme beaucoup de pays vulnérables par rapport au changement climatique, a opté pour une feuille de route climatique, l'action climatique horizon 2030. C'est le plan national climat, avec une série d'actions sectorielles et des actions transversales qui permettent à notre pays aujourd'hui, mais aussi à travers la coopération internationale et l'appui extérieur, de pouvoir lutter efficacement et collectivement contre les changements climatiques. Le retour d'expérience sur les investigations, les expériences que nous sommes en train de mener dans les différents endroits, dans le nord, dans les hauts plateaux, dans les régions typiques et dans le site, vont servir pour introduire des éléments 
d'adaptation de ces équipements aux conditions climatiques extrêmes, températures élevées et les ventières, dans les normes, dans les procédés de normalisation, dans les procédés de certification, dans les procédés d'homologation de de, de des équipements fonctionnant avec l'énergie solaire et l'énergie éolienne. Another key source of renewable energy is wind. Spain is the first country in the world where wind power produces more electricity than any other source of energy, contributing to more than 20% of the national electricity demand. Estamos en el parque eólico de Serra de Rubio 1 y Serra de Rubio 2, que son dos parques eólicos formados por 50 turbinas modelo acción a Wind Power 1500 y los parques de aquí de la Serra de Rubio generan a lo largo del año la energía equivalente a unas 38.000 viviendas. Es un claro ejemplo de unos paisajes estupendos y una integración del mundo rural con el mundo industrial que puede interactuar perfectamente. Well, we have uh, 1,200 megawatts installed in Catalonia. That represents uh, the production of the wind farms in Catalonia is almost like uh, one third of the consumption of the population of uh, Barcelona. In terms of CO2 emissions, uh, that uh, means that we avoid uh, uh, equivalent to 700,000 cars uh, working here in, the, in, in Barcelona. Larger cities have a ravenous appetite for energy, consuming two-thirds of the world's energy and creating over 70% of global carbon dioxide emissions. Some cities, like Barcelona, are leading in effectively lowering greenhouse gas emissions, while generating important lessons for many other cities in the region. Barcelona quiere reducir el 23% de las emisiones de efecto invernadero en el 2020. Además, queremos potenciar la autosuficiencia en la ciudad y, por tanto, aumentar la energía local ¿no? producida alrededor de un 10%. En la actualidad estamos en un 2%. Además, estamos trabajando intensamente para conseguir que más calles de nuestra ciudad sean para los vecinos, para caminar, para las bicicletas, para mejorar los itinerarios diarios de la ciudadanía y no tanto para los coches. No somos un problema, las ciudades somos y debemos ser la solución frente a estas cuestiones. La propuesta concreta es esta, ¿no? construcción de un nuevo modelo energético, de hacerlo también luchando contra elementos que hoy nos estamos encontrando en nuestra ciudad, como puede ser que mucha gente no tiene acceso a la energía. Y por tanto creemos que esto es un sinsentido y a la vez que luchamos contra el cambio climático, también construimos una ciudad más justa, no solo socialmente, sino ambientalmente. inside the building of uh, Fabrica del Sol and we can see most solutions that buildings in, in cities like Barcelona are doing. We have uh, a, a vertical garden and it's not only a, a beautiful and nice solution for the people working in the building or for the visitors, but it also helps to refresh and to renew and to clean the air that goes back into the building. Building, but also having this glass roof uh, helps us to increase the, the light that goes into the building, into the offices. And by doing so, we reduce the amount of electricity or energy that we need to light the building. And this is a one micro solution to uh, combat climate change. And Climate change is a major concern for the UFM region. It impacts freshwater resources, it impacts energy, it impacts uh, tourism, it impacts the cities. So we need to take urgent action. So our challenges are, of course, the climate change, but then again, how do we change? 
how do we, what are, what are the examples that we can benefit from other countries that have undergone this change? We can benefit from UFM's is network, learn what other countries have done and try to manipulate these changes so that they fit our agenda and we can go forward. Well, in many of the developing countries and the developed countries, it's not a matter of not having good ideas. It's not a matter of not having good legislation. Sometimes it's how to find the mediator that will be able to bring together the financiers, the IFIs, or the, the companies, or uh, facilitate some type of regulation. So that's one of the most important things, I think, that UFM can play. They are a catalyst. La question des politiques à mettre en œuvre, elle se pose bien évidemment tout autant dans le nord que dans le sud. Au nord, les villes sont construites, la pression démographique est moindre, les mouvements de population sont moins importants, les villes sont déjà largement équipées. Au sud, la situation est très différente, une population qui augmente, une expansion urbaine très importante, et c'est dans ce sens que les politiques urbaines des villes du sud, qui font face à cet afflux démographique, le besoin en énergie lié à l'élévation des besoins, font que les questions sont plus prégnantes dans le sud que, que dans le nord. The ambitious energy policy of the Moroccan city of Agadir is driven both by climate considerations as well as an effort to reduce its municipal energy bill. In the beginning, I believe that the Turabiyah for Agadir, which was the name of the Turabiyah for Agadir, was a political decision and a political decision that did not return to it on the basis of that it would take a decision in what is related to the power and the power of the power and the power of the power and the power of the power وكذلك فيما يخص التغيرات المناخية المناخية يعني بجميع الأوجه الممكنة. parmi les projets importants que la ville d'Agadir a réalisé c'est la réhabilitation de l'ancienne décharge de d'Agadir et c'est dans le cadre de cette réhabilitation il y a un projet de valorisation énergétique du biogaz pour produire de l'énergie verte qui va être utilisée par la commune au niveau de l'éclairage public. Due to global warming, the Mediterranean Sea is rising by more than one millimeter per year. Many coastal cities are already dealing with the effects of climate change and nearly all are at risk. A temperature increase of one to three degrees could expose millions of people in the region to coastal flooding with incalculable losses in land, property and infrastructure as well as historical and cultural assets. There is a crucial need to improve the resilience of Mediterranean coastal cities and prepare for the future effects of climate change. With science informing us that as 1.5 degrees of warming is now already certain, adaptation and disaster risk management become essential. The iconic city of Venice famous for being built partially underwater, has been battling since its founding with periodic rises in sea level. La laguna sfamava con pesce che produceva, sfamava i veneziani. Adesso di, quello, di, quel, di quella fauna è rimasto molto poco. After a very heavy flood event in 1966, which hit the city of Venice, a research center was created by the municipal authority which is exploring the uh, mechanisms contributing to high floods in the Venetian lagoon in order to be able to forecast uh, these events and to create alerts uh, before an event is upcoming. With the city slipping slowly into the lagoon and sea levels continuing to rise, the ambitious Mose project will be fighting the laws of nature using flood barriers. L'opera fondamentale sarà il Mose, 
il MOSE che diventa opera idraulica, opera ingegneristica sicuramente all'avanguardia supera addirittura quella che può essere l'esperienza del nord Europa, dell'Olanda, dove non esistono dighe eh, sotto il livello del, dell'acqua che poi riemergono, ma che diventa anche fondamentale per quello che può essere il futuro di rialzamento dei livelli dei mari dovuti proprio al mutamento climatico. Creating uh, resilience among the population is extremely important and helping them to be resilient is not only these big and important measures, it's also this, uh, helping them to prepare and cope in everyday life, like having alarms, being informed on what is happening. Il sistema MOSI è stato progettato per resistere fino a, a maree in mare di 3 metri, quindi garantire un dislivello di 2 metri mantenendo il livello in laguna fra 1 metro e 1,10 metro e dieci e garantire tutte le condizioni che finora si sono presentate nella storia e tenendo conto anche dei possibili cambiamenti climatici che potremo affrontare nei prossimi anni. With this example, we can understand better that the culture is so important for the world and we cannot divide the culture from nature. It is a continuum and we have to defend this culture as we are going to defend the environment and the economy as well. It is a painstaking change that needs to happen because otherwise um, soon we won't have a planet. As uh, the Secretary General of the United Nations uh, uses to say, we, we don't have a plan B because we don't have a planet B. It's very clear that no country alone can make an impact reducing the increase of temperatures in the world. And to fight climate change, we, act, we all have to act together. And also, it's very clear that countries need to be supported. Paris n'était pas, n'était que le début, n'était que le commencement, et on n'a pas tout réglé à Paris. Les prochaines étapes du processus vont être aussi décisives. Donc, les parties, avec le secrétariat, devra se pencher maintenant à traduire le, le contenu de cet accord en termes de mécanismes, en termes d'institutions, de soutien et de réalisation des actions et des engagements des partis. Je ne sais pas si je suis en train de me faire. Je ne sais pas si je suis en train de me faire. Je ne sais pas si je suis en train de me faire. Je ne sais pas si je suis en train de me faire. Je ne sais pas si je suis en train de me faire. Je ne sais pas si je suis en train de me faire. Je ne sais pas si je suis en train de me faire. Je ne sais pas si je suis en train de تغاري سواء ضلنا كرت وهذا ما بسينا وين جمرة وين تتيب بخنا بس وريخرك ما وين هني جا L'action aujourd'hui doit être au cœur des gouvernements, au cœur de la société civile, parce qu'on ne peut pas attendre jusqu'à 2020 pour la mise en œuvre de, des contributions. Il faudrait que d'ici 2020, on puisse expérimenter, on puisse innover et on puisse revenir en 2020 pour dire oui, nous pouvons augmenter nos ambitions, nous pouvons donner une solution pour atteindre l'objectif du climat mais on a besoin de plus d'engagement et on a besoin surtout de l'action.